Hey everybody, welcome back once again to the RetroGameFix.com Retro Jones Podcast number 112. This is your host Mitch. And this is Mike. And here we are once again. I'm sure we're going to hit on some Switch stuff. We're probably going to hit on some pinball stuff that, you know. And uh, I know we're going to hit on a bunch of retro stuff today too. That sounds about uh, that sounds about right, doesn't it? Kind of, par- a, uh, kind of power for the course, yeah. That's kind of what we do <laughs> recently. So, um, so Mike... Start us off, man. Give us the contact info and all that. Oh, let's start out with the voicemail. 678-995-5103. 678-995-5103. Again, one day uh we will uh we will get to get to those voicemails. Um secondly, twitter.com, facebook.com, youtube.com slash retro game fix. That's where you can find us on social media. Otherwise, you can get to us via email questions at retrogamefix.com. Questions at retrogamefix.com. Indeed. What's been going on, man? Not man, not a ton. It's it's one of those it's kind of been a broken record lately with uh with the gaming stuff. I don't know. Not a I bought a car. That was fun. Yeah. I was telling you about Sweet. that. I was telling you about that, how like normally buying a car is a pain in the ass. I hate buying cars, dude. It's a bitch, but like uh, the last couple times I've been in and out in essentially under an hour. I don't even believe that. I still don't believe that. I believe it, my friend. I uh, usually it's just because I know what the, like no. So it's always it's been new cars, and so there's been no really kind of whatever with it. So I just fill out the application and get everything locked away, and like send them my down payment information prior to getting there. Mm-hmm. And then it's like I show up. And they're like, car's right here. You want? So I essentially set an appointment. They're like, the car's right here. We kind of take it around the block. I'm like, yep, that's it. Let's lock it up. They have me sign a few things on the iPad, get it through detailing, take my other car off my hands, and we're good to go. Hmm. Yeah, that, that just sounds impossible to me. Every, every time, even if I'm like, I know exactly what I want. Can you get it ready for me? Sure. Four hours later. Ah, uh, we're still working on the paperwork, you know? It's like, ah, I hate it. My dad, on the other hand, we've talked about this briefly before, but my dad, I have no idea. I don't even think he knows how many. I actually, I'm going to ask him tomorrow how many vehicles he's actually bought in his lifetime. Because I know my mom had told me when they'd been married for 25 years or somewhere around then. And I was like, uh, not too long ago, I was like, how many vehicles did he buy when you were married? And she's like, 63. <laughs> I'm like, how sixty three? She's like sixty three. I was at, like, are you sure? I'm She's at, like, I'm I'm positive. I'm at four in the last two years. Five, well, five in the last three years. So I'm getting them kind of on pace. No, not with my dad. Um, I uh, he has been. I I mean that my. By the way, my parents got divorced. Uh, seventeen years ago. So my dad had, was up to sixty three. The twenty five years prior to that so but do the math on yeah that. my dad loves that i don't know why man he'll go to like <laughs> he's still nice by the way he still goes to every single like every other day i'm like what are you doing well i'm just in a dealership checking out this or that and i'm like what the hell you just bought a car <laughs> like a week ago i'm serious like two maybe two years ago he bought like six cars that year yeah that's funny it was insane i'm like what are you doing yeah God. It's one you know, the, hmm? oh no, go ahead. Well, I was gonna say, I, you or me, I guess we can't say much about it. I bought seven pinballs this year, and you bought eleven pairs of headset or uh, headphones. I could have probably actually bought a car. I could have leased a car for what I spent on headphones and headphone equipment this year. So I could have, I could have paid straight up cash for uh, something. This year. <laughs> it's it's so it's kind of because. We, this I could have easily paid off my car. I could have easily paid off my car. So we, we didn't. We didn't have a very heavy winter in Minnesota this last year. But uh, mm-hmm. this this time, I opted for an all wheel drive, and now I'm kind of pissed because it's going into spring. And so I'm like, "Fuck! I want to try this all wheel drive shit out in the snow," and mm-hmm. that's gonna have to wait. Yeah, I guess so. so. I, so. I don't have any snarky remarks for that. Yeah, there isn't. It. I took it while it was raining today, so I was like, well, I'm going to take this son of a bitch out in the rain, see if I can... Uh, Start spinning around in it or something, or see if you can like somehow like get it to spin around. Yeah, it didn't do that. Little- it's actually pretty cool, man. There's this thing you can change on the dash, so it shows your like weight distribution, and it shows the four tires, and then when you're accelerating and corny- cornering, it shows where it's actually applying the power, what wheel. 
So hmm. I imagine I'm going to get in an accident because I'm too busy watching that. Yeah. And trying to fuck with that thing. So, yeah, that might happen. Probably. So no, I'm just kidding. Uh, anyway, yeah. yeah so that was that's kind of that's kind of my day. And then I've been I've been I played some Switch. Played a lot of Switch. Played uh. So oh, I how did I not put this on here? You know what? what? Uh, you jump in with your stuff because I ha- actually I have more Switch stuff than I thought. I can't believe I didn't remember this. I just threw it in the chat. So you if you want to jump into uh mm, your taxi big. update, I've got a I've actually got some fun stuff to talk about. The quick update that happens supposedly every week. I think I'll not have an update next week, because, or maybe my update will be that hopefully that is done. I'm so close to having going this to clear. Damn thing done. Yeah, we were talking about it last week, and I got in touch with this guy that's going to do the automotive clear coat and stuff like that. And I sent you his taxi that he did. Oh my god, I tweeted it out a couple times. It looks so good. Well, he's got basically he's got it, and this is what you want to do when you have like a play field that's perfectly cleared and it's got that mirror uh, quality to it is just he's got it like out out in daylight and it's basically got like reflecting a bunch of clouds and junk on it everything that's in the sky basically looks like a mirror so <laughs> like i can't wait if mine looks anything like that um i'm gonna be one happy camper and uh the price is right on that too so i will just say that i'm not gonna say numbers or anything like that but he's like yeah a super nice guy and helpful guy and was like you know if you, i've got this cradle if you need to borrow it to transport it you know to put the thing in um i can even drop it off at your house i'm like really um I don't know. Super nice guy. I've never met him before, but, um, you know, a buddy of mine that hooked us up was like, oh my God, you have to see his, uh, see his machines. Cause he's a big system 11 fan like I am. And, um, he's got like pretty much the same machines as I do. Well, you know, to an extent, the same machines that I do. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to look at him and be like, wow, I feel really insecure now. So, <laughs> but, uh, I cannot wait. I can't wait to get it to that point, but I seriously, I'm 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 in the, on the bottom of the playfield under the flippers. They have they have the credits. They're on two basically signs, and I can't get them. I can't get the stencils like printed up by my buddy on them because they're kind of angled, and they're smaller and bigger text and stuff like that. So I'm thinking about doing, you know, one of the things I've read about on um, on Vid's uh, playfield restoration guide were the um, water slide decals. Where you just basically have, print them on this water slide uh, paper and then spray it with some kind of clear, and then actually transfer the ink onto the playfield. So I might actually do that because it looks like just shit. If right at currently at the moment, and it, I have to do something with it, and I hate ah, it's just it's one of those things where I'm like, this is my the last thing, and the last thing I, I save the worst for last. So uh, that see it's. it's I'm pretty confident I'm going to fix it, but it's going to be one of those things. If I don't fix it, I'm it's, I'm going to see it every time I play the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to not look at the rest of the play field. That looks just fucking amazing. Yeah. And then you're going to, uh, you're always, it's like if a pixel dies on a TV, no one else sees the dead pixel, but if you fucking happen to see it, you're like, ah, oh my God, you're like, I can't see the, I can't see the show that's on man. <laughs> that one pixel. It's always that way. Yeah, so anyway, I, I think I have that under control, but I'm getting a little antsy, you know. I got to keep this patience up. I've been doing this for over a month now, well over a month. So I need to keep that patience, you know, on on in check here. And, um, you know, sooner or later, it, uh, it'll it be off, and I can't wait to put pictures up of that, assuming it's not totally fucked up. I totally, by the way, I totally, um, I totally, uh, uh, I, I trust this guy knows exactly what he, I mean, he just, I had all these questions for him and oh man, I, I don't know. He, he definitely knows what he's doing. So I'm, I'm stoked about it. And, uh, as far as that, you know, I'm, so, I'm, I'm sure that, um, I always try to keep it brief on that because I'm, I sound like a broken record sometimes, but, uh, I also helped a buddy today pick up an NBA, a Bally NBA fast break, which is pretty dope. So that came out in 1997. So it's a Williams, or a w, WMS 95, which is like all the really awesome Williams came, uh, games came at that whole era is just amazing. So, uh, he got it for 1200 bucks too, which is ridiculous steal and needed a little bit of work, 
play field needed to be cleaned and all that stuff, but it's super cool. And I was trying to figure out in 1997 who on the Timberwolves was uh, number two. Christian Leitner? And I was like, no, in 97. Mm. Um, there was no number two. I looked up the roster. I was like, oh, they just put random. They just put a they, number two yeah, on a guy. Uh, because, yeah, Marbury was three. And that's as close as it got, but it's clearly a number two. So. I'm looking at this right now. How is this? How is this as far as a pin goes? It looks it, it's super colorful. I mean, it looks like it will light up the night sky with how many fucking lights are on this thing. Well, I mean, that whole era, like that whole era is just creates a zombie. There's a shot clock on it. looks dope. It, it's totally dope. It's it's a fun game, man. It's really one of those underrated, uh, you know, it, ask anybody that uh, really enjoys playing pinball, like what they think of NBA fast break. And they'll be like, that's a good game, you know, and $1,200 is a steal. I seriously, if my buddy would have been like, eh, I don't want to buy it. I would have been like, all right. You'd have been like, God up. damn it. No, I would. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I would have been like, this is amazing. But God damn it. I don't need any more fucking pinballs. So they only so, li- so they didn't so they only licensed. Well, they got they do have some players on there. Debt left Schrempf is on there on the back glass. Oh okay. Maybe, All right, maybe, I didn't really look at that. May, yeah, that they, and then uh, you see the uh, Timberwolf in the lower right by the flipper. Oh yeah, I do see that. Yeah 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 yeah. Well yeah okay. Huh yeah, they do have some licensed players on there. I know. I don't. I don't understand why. Uh, why, uh, I don't know, but looking at even some of the teams, I mean, two of the teams on there. Yeah, Charles that Barkley's I know, on there when he was on the Suns. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't really look Anthony at it. Anthony Hard- It looks like Anthony Hardaway. Yeah, yeah, I did see I did see him on there. He's on the side, too. I think he's on the, Kim Eli- on the is side. Kim Elijah, maybe, or something? I can't, I, can't, I can't find an actual big enough picture of the back last to uh, knock yeah. them all out, but NBA was really my jam back at that time. It's it's an awesome game. I mean, it's it's awesome. Uh, I played it a couple times before, and I'm super jealous, man. I'll be honest. I want it, but um, I'm not going to find one for twelve hundred dollars um, at ever <laughs> at this point ever. So uh, yeah, no, you would love it. You would love it. It's it's a blast. So God, anyway, I'm, I'm looking at the Timberwolves 1997 roster. Uh, there's, there's, KG obviously, but then it was like. Uh, Dean Garrett, remember that kerfuffle? Tom Gugliata, Marbury, yeah. then we still had Sam Mitchell, who later coached the team, was probably one of the coaches, worst coaches, coaches in the history of the Timberwolves. <laughs> and then Doug West was still playing. He was number Flip five. Flip Saunders, he was Flip was five. still coaching that team too. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, he was. So in the '97, '98, man, I I can't jump down this. Uh, I can't jump down this. But Tom Hammonds. Oh my God, Cherokee Parks, dude! I remember watching these games. Ah, oh, I gotta stop looking at basketball stuff. Anyway, now I want that. You totally want it, dude. If you ever <laughs> see one come up for, really, they I, go I, for I'd, about. I'd actually maybe get that before a pin bot, just because it's more up my uh, alley oh, dude, alley dude. of uh, hobbies. Well, that's the thing. You can find this particular era, uh, WPC ninety five. I mean, just the some of the greatest pinball games ever came out in that era like what medieval madness how are the sounds and, uh, uh, it's awesome like the sounds are fantastic i mean they're they're like top notch i mean that's what i'm saying it creates this like ambiance like the sounds and just the light show and all that stuff you need to look up some videos after we're done yeah well this is the the cool thing is this particular pin in this era as well because you had like tales of the arabian nights you had Attack from Mars, you had like Medieval Madness, you had like all these huge heavy hitters um, that are like th- really, 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 really incredibly expensive, like mm. more than you'd ever want to spend on a pinball machine for normal people. But uh, this, you can, I mean, it goes for about two grand. So this is a very, very reasonably priced game from that era. Um, you know, maybe 22 or something like that, but you can find them and, and, they're not as expensive as everything else from that era. It's it's a solid, awesome game. And if you think you, I, I'm a hundred percent. You're the first person I thought of when you went to get go get this. I was like, Mike would love. Yeah, this. I just looked at that and I was like, God damn it! I was like, I checked Craigslist and I was like, please don't tell me there's one on here because I just put money down on a because co- I was like, I almost <laughs> did a sign and drive, and I was yeah. like, if I don't do a sign and drive or if I don't put money down on this car. 
I'm going to end up doing something stupid with that money. So I put uh-huh. w- way more money. I just like was like, take all my money and put it down on this car right now because I'm going to do something dumb. And <laughs> then, uh, which probably is also not a great investment, but at least I know where the money went. I was just on Craigslist and there isn't any because I was like, fuck, if there was one, I'd be like, ah. Mm-hmm. I'm going to keep an eye out for you. I'm going to be that friend that's like, hey, man. Since I can't get this, you need to get this. Yeah, thank you for that. Appreciate it. That's the way I was with my buddy that picked it up. I was like, you have to buy this or I'm going to kill you. I threatened his life and his family and stuff. How did that go over? I'm just kidding. He was fine. He wanted it, really. I mean, anybody would want that machine. Yeah, it looked awesome. Mm Mm-hmm. So anyway, it's, uh, it's a reasonably priced, awesome game for that era. So, um, anyway, I mean, it's the same, uh, same system and all that stuff. So I thought that would be a, a, a nice little nugget to throw in there today. It was super quick. I didn't see it that much or, uh, you know, for, for that long, but it's, it's, it's super dope. So uh, yeah, buy I'm one. Ch- I'm jealous. I didn't even know it was a thing. Now I want one. <laughs> you're like, when I was putting stuff on the, on the chat thing, you're for like what we're doing on a show. You're like, NBA fast break. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> you dick. <laughs> anyway uh that's all i got for this week so if i got rid of some of these headphones i'd be able to have one dude you could probably trade all your pairs of headphones buy one and still have plenty of money left over <laughs> yeah probably could um yep. i also just added a pile of other stuff but uh there was some nintendo switch stuff that happened this weekend yeah I need to hear about it. So this weekend, did you play or see or remember me talking about Splatoon on the Wii U? Oh, yeah. You talked about it a lot, actually, even on the podcast. Yeah. I totally remember. That. Yeah. So if you if you remember correctly, I loved Splatoon, and it's essentially a... Um, I always thought you were saying Splatoon. Nah, until Spl- like- Splatoon. 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 Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Splatoon, if you want. Splatoon. Say Splatoon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm saying Splatoon. So anyway, um, it was awesome. Oh, on, right. It was awesome on Wii U, and uh, essentially for for you know, it's it, just to rehash what it is. It's essentially a multiplayer game. There is a single story campaign to it, and I'm not sure if Spl- uh, Splatoon Two will have that. But um, you essentially just have these paint these paint guns, and there's a variety of different paint guns you can get, and you just try to spray as much paint all over like a, a map that you can, and then you mm-hmm. can also shoot enemies, and if you blow up your enemies that are also trying to cover the map, they'll blow up and then splatter your color paint in the area that you killed them. And then mm-hmm. uh, at the end of the match, whoever has the most paint covering the map uh, wins the match. And they're five-minute matches, and it's one of the most addicting games that I have ever played in my life. Because it's always, they're only five minutes. And so it's always like, one more match, one more match, one more match. And then the next thing you know, three hours later, one more match, one more match. So anyway, this uh, this weekend, mm-hmm. Splatoon 2 is coming out on Nintendo Switch. This and, weekend or this, or, or, th- like uh, now? Let, or let me, no, 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 let me, let me rephrase this. Sorry. Splatoon 2 is coming out on the Nintendo Switch at some point, and this weekend okay. they essentially had a beta uh, to play the game, uh, but Nintendo calls their betas, in a way, they call them test fires, and the way this works is they're probably trying to test network connectivity, so over the three-day weekend, uh, they had two... That you can only play it for an hour at a time at spe- specific times, so in mm. central time, it was 2 o'clock and 10 o'clock on Friday... 6 a.m., 2 p.m., and 10 o'clock on Saturday. And then this morning it was 6 a.m. And so uh, I only got in on a couple of them, and then I wasn't able to fully play, but I got a few matches in on each. um, On Friday night, I got a couple matches in yesterday, and I got up this morning at like 4 in the morning, uh, Mm -hmm. mostly because I couldn't sleep, but then I played some Splatoon uh, this morning from my bed or some Splatoon 2. And it's mm-hmm. fucking, it looks so good. It's so much fun. It's everything. 
it's everything that was good about the Wii U version. It, mm. in a way, it feels like the Wii U version, like a remastered version of that. So I'm curious to see what they're going to do with the new version. But it's probably going to be new maps. Uh, hopefully, a, a, a more in-depth single-player campaign, more weapons, uh. more customization. But it's just, again, it's just it's 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 Nintendo. You, you go, well, what, what's great about it? And you're like, it's just a it's just a ton of fun. It's bright. The colors are great. The music is great. The action is great. It's fast paced. Uh, you don't get caught up with all of the online BS you get with other games and people, you know, calling you acronyms that I don't even know what they are. And then I'm like, is that an insult? <laughs> I'm getting yeah. too old for this. And so it's just so much fun. And yeah, so I mean, it was, and I saw a lot of people online playing it this weekend. A lot of people tweeting about it, man. And it's, I think, again, Nintendo, Nintendo has hit it out of the, hit it all the ballpark. Yeah, it sounds awesome. I can't wait to get a Switch some at some point. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, and so, uh, speaking of that, uh, with the Switch, they were planning on making, uh, manufacturing eight million uh, for mm-hmm. this fiscal year. Uh, because of the reception of the uh, of the uh, console, they have now doubled manufacturing production up to 16 million units. Holy cow! That is a very un Nintendo thing to do. Uh, but I think they, <laughs> I, <laughs> I think they kind of realize like, hey, we need to stay ahead of this thing, man. We've got a home run here. Hey, well, we need to make money at some point and start producing to to meet demand. Yeah, and there, well, and if you even think. Like all of these switches going out the door, much like Nintendo consoles are one to do, you end up buying accessories just because it's Nintendo. Like the Joy Cons. I complained about some of the pricing, right? The Joy Cons, 80 bucks. I'm already like, I need red Joy Cons because because that's. Could have had a red and a blue one. Yeah, well, I I I didn't want the two. Although they do look cool. Actually, I do wish I would have kept the neon one, but it's what it is. Mm -hmm. Um, They do look cool. And then, like, just this weekend. I went and bought a second dock on Nintendo.com because you can't get the dock with the AC adapter, so it's just the dock. I can't even plug it in. It's sixty bucks. And then this morning I went out and picked up the thirty dollar AC adapter, and I'm like, there went ninety bucks. Mm. And like, they're just like, they can't manufacture these things fast enough, man. And it's great to see Nintendo on top. And quite honestly, well, I, don't, I guess I wouldn't say on top, but just back to their their back on back on their game. And um. Yeah, it's just it's it's just nice to have another Nintendo console back in the market and another Zelda out there. And there hasn't been a ton out. I mean, Zelda's kind of carrying this thing, but Zelda's also a good enough game to, you know, buy a console for. And so yeah. I finally did the first dungeon this morning, and uh, at, really at like thirty five hours in, I was like, "Holy crap! What have you been doing?" Awesome stuff, my friend. Just awesome, amazing stuff. All right, I believe you. What? So, how do those numbers? How does sixteen million compare to like PlayStation and Xbox launches? Well, so manufactured numbers, who knows? Because they may not sell through them. But the PS4, uh-huh. uh, let's see, first year sales. Yeah, because I was gonna say, let's uh, we we don't know what the Switch's numbers are gonna be, but we, they are we going to manufacture sixteen. I th- the PS4 did twenty million. It looks like in its first year. In its first year? Yeah. 18, wow. 18.5 million, technically. 18, 20 million, something like that in its first year. But the PS4 is like also one of the best selling consoles at this point in its life cycle of all time. Right? So wow. it's like, you know, the, the, the GameCube sold, I think, 35 million or something. What, I, I, well, maybe that's wrong. Maybe that was the N64. But I mean, all things considered, man. This has been a huge, huge, huge success for Nintendo. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, I mean, it it looks to be a huge success for Nintendo. Um, I mean, I, I guess if if they meet uh, demand, and I, I don't know. I mean, again, y- y- with everything they've done to kind of hype this thing up or to get Nintendo in the news and all that stuff, it seems like you know at some point you got to sell stuff, you know, instead of just uh, you know with the amiibo the. Uh, the mini Nintendo or the NES classic. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. um, you know, like everything that they've done, uh, well, you know, like collector's edition, everything like at some point you got to actually start selling stuff. And this is the point where you have to start selling stuff. Cause this is the big one. This is what all that's been building up to, you know? Yeah. Uh, 
I'm assuming. So uh, that's good, man. I, I hope uh, I hope it all works out. I I hope to be one of those people some somewhere down the road. You know, somewhere maybe in the summer or something. Yeah. So uh, that's cool. That's good to hear. It's interesting. I don't know. I mean, it, it, w- would you have thought like, um, you know, maybe six months ago that that would be the case? Yes. Okay. Would everybody else have thought that? No, but I think we were some of the first people saying this is exactly what Nintendo should be doing. And I think it's paying off. I Maybe I had some question marks about if it will work. But I mean, when this thing came up, we were both saying... Nintendo competing and making another PS4, a, another Xbox. Fuck, the Xbox can't even sell next to the PS4. Why would Nintendo jump out and do it? Like, the PS4 is crushing Xbox. X, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, what's the Xbox's numbers? I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, so, right. So, so, year to date, uh, I think the PS4 is at around 60 million. And I don't uh-huh. even know if the uh, Xbox has broke 30. Oh, wow. So sitting here saying, well, Nintendo needs to make a powerful... Like, no, they fuck, they don't. No, they don't. Mm-hmm. That would be the worst thing they could do. And mm-hmm. we were saying that. And I, it's, and it's not... I, there was more than just us saying that. A lot of people said that. But I was like, this... I know this is what I want when I heard about the console handheld hybrid. I knew what, what, mm-hmm. what was, you know... I knew what it was going to get my cash. And it's been amazing so far. And so it's... God, it's just good to see... And that's not to say it doesn't have its shortcomings, because it does. I mean, some of the there's there's I've you know I there's some overscan issues when docking and undocking on my TV. It's got the thing where the HDMI doesn't shut off and on. It's had the Joy-Con problems, you know, you know the kickstand is cheap. However, you want to break that down, the accessories are overpriced. the The only game right now that really is compelling is Zelda. Doesn't change the fact that it's an amazing console with an amazing an amazing launch game. And they're selling units. Yeah, good, good to good to see. I mean, you, I mean, especially after the Wii U, you know, like I think everybody's been kind of thinking, oh God, you know, when's it going to happen for um, for Nintendo? When are they going to have to stop making consoles and just mail it in like uh, like Sega did, you know, and just license their games out to the other guys or whatever? But it looks like even mid con or like mid console really or mid lifetime release or whatever. Like we had, we kind of been talking about that as a, as a thing as well. And man, I, I don't know. Just seems like they're killing it. It seems like they're on pace to kill it. So, yeah. And I think we're also in a spot now where there's this weird blend of what people kind of accept for a, an upgrade path with electronic devices in general. And I just don't know if yes, consoles are generally five, six, seven years, Mm-hmm. Um, but phones are one or two years and everything else is kind of one or two years. Graphics cards are one or two years. And I know it's a different conversation. And it's different for everybody, but mm-hmm. I just don't know if that like three new consoles all at the same time really, really holds as much weight anymore, especially if one of them executes on a strategy and does it well. Uh, yeah. And that's what the switch did, what they wanted to probably do with the Wii U and weren't able to. And it just makes mm-hmm. sense that, uh, Nintendo doubled down. I, they doubled down on it and they pulled it off, and it's awesome. So I, and it's just I hate being a, like I'm a broken record now because I keep getting on this like, you know, Nintendo fanboy fest. But I just can't stress enough how much I'm enjoying the system. So yeah, well, and you're not the only one. So I mean, I'm not saying I am, but I'm saying that you're not the only person out there. So I'm sure people get it as far as that goes, but yeah, I'll just introduce us next time. And be like, welcome to the broken record podcast. <laughs> yeah, we could do that. We're on episode 359. Yeah. Where we talk about the exact same thing every single time. And you're still <laughs> no. listening to us for some reason to hear us say the exact same things week after week. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's really not that different from like any major modern radio outlet. No, I mean we got stuff. That's that's what's going on right now. So I mean, with my stuff, that's what's going on in my life and it, right now. And uh, the switch is happening everywhere uh, outside of my garage. Yeah. Um. Let's. So let's get to some. Uh, let's get. I to like some, it. I personally like it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Like what the switch. No, no, I personally like talking about the exact same thing every week. Yeah, me too. <laughs> let's uh, let's jump into some of this retro stuff. So last week, 
I closed out the collection with the Sega Ma- the uh, Blue All Run with the Sega Master did, System collection. Did it just amaze you, like having that thing in your hands? No, no, it didn't. I mean, really? it did, but it's kind of. We talked about that a little bit offline. It was just kind of like I got it, and it was like, God, this is fucking amazing. And I took pictures and I put it on the shelf, and then like ten minutes later, I was like, that happened, and it's just kind of on the shelf. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, yep. it's it's a weight. It's kind of a weight off off my shoulders because you have it. But then it's just like any other collectible, right? Where you're like, okay, I got that, but I could already play Outrun, so now it just kind of sits there. But I have to be honest, it feels pretty fucking cool to not have to worry about it. Oh yeah. Um, well, yeah. I, I so can, there's I that. Can only imagine. No, but it is one of those things where it's like the the whole build up is kind of where it's at as far as like the build up, the anticipation of it coming and and all that stuff. Um, you know, it's and then you get it and it's like, all right, I yeah, got it. Like, it's just like, and, oh uh, yeah, that's an outrun with a blue label on it. <laughs> I'll glance at it when I walk by it and um, just be happy that I have it, and that's about it. Yeah, so that was right. that was cool, but um, so that's that's I mean that's awesome and. It, you know, and I just want to say I'm I plan on getting back to some more Master System games here, and I think maybe after uh, after the pinball, once you're done with that pinball, maybe we jump oh, back yeah. into pick up the Sega Master System Marathon. Yeah, I've I've kind of been like itching to play some Master System stuff. I've been thinking about that a lot lately. Where um, whereas I just haven't really had that much time. But even my modded Game Gear with the Master Gear and stuff like that, even even just before I go to bed or something, I I really actually I. I've been thinking about like this is kind of ridiculous, but I I really want to play uh, Golden Axe Warrior again. I played the entire thing all the way through, but it's it, real, man, it's, it's so real, it's awesome. Real, it's really good. It just looks awesome. It just does. I mean, it looks awesome. Yeah. It plays awesome. It's everything about it. Like everything about it is why the Master System is awesome, and also how it differentiates itself from the NES. Even though it's like a Zelda clone, it does it's totally Zelda clone. It but it does enough. To be awesome on its own merits. Yeah, I agree with you. I fully agree with you. It's so good. So I've been thinking about possibly or picking up Fantasy Star again because I got pretty far into Fantasy Star and then I think I got distracted. Now I really want to go through and beat that game. So actually, I'll probably do that before anything. That was really, really good too. I don't know if you ever played that one, but it was awesome. Yeah, yeah. I want to get back to those and like we were going down the uh, kind of alphabetically before. And I mm-hmm. think now that it just, it's like, you know what, maybe we just fucking just play whatever the hell we feel like on the Master System, and those will end up turning into topics of the show. Well, yeah, because when we stopped doing the videos, it was like, you know, at first it was like, good game, good game, crap game, but we had a lot of fun with it. Good game, good game. Now, it was, then it was crap game, crap game, crap game, crap game, crap game, game crap yeah, game, yeah, crap yeah, game, yeah. crap game. You know, like... um and then, yeah, it just got ti- then it just got tired. Then it just got tired. They just got tiring. I was like, "Fine, I don't want to do these anymore. Can we just do some of the good games?" <laughs> uh, uh, after that enduro racer one, where you just basically like went in a straight line through four levels and didn't even move. That was like the last you could take video, your hand. Yeah, you could take your hands off. You took your hands off the controller pad and just went in a straight line through five levels or something like that. Yeah, and there was someone that had the balls to be like, "This game was great. You don't know what you're talking about." I'm like, "Did you watch the fucking video? It plays itself, you dumbass." Yeah, I'm like, I didn't even have to put any effort into this. But so, uh, yeah, I, I'll pick that back up. I'll, I'll, I'd like to do some more of the videos and stuff too. So we'll see. We'll see how time time works out. It's always a time thing. You know what I mean? Because there's just. You know, it's not so like, much stuff going on right now. Yeah, so much stuff going on. But uh, so speaking of that, after so after getting that the Sega Master System stuff knocked out, I started looking looking through my collection, and someone had tweeted at me and said, "Well, what what are you going to collect next? You know, or what are you going to go after next?" And you know, I just kind of responded, "I don't think I'm, there's any full collection I'm going to go after next, but I wanted to start maybe filling out some of the other." You know, the other systems I I have, so I thought, well, I'm going to go back to Genesis and see see what's out there. Uh, and mm-hmm. so I started looking at stuff on Genesis, like Quackshot, for example, or um, you know, House of Illusions, or a bunch of this other stuff that was like, oh, those are cool Sega Ma- or Sega Genesis games. And I was specifically looking for the Sega Genesis games that were like the OG black boxes with the art, like the box art in the middle and the logo up on top. Um, mm-hmm. You know, kind kind of like the Genesis version of the NES black boxes, 
right? There's just mm-hmm. like there's not, there's more than a handful of them. There's a ton of them, but um, like Quack Shots, like forty bucks. Toe Jam and Earl's, like sixty bucks, which I have. But I was just kind of looking at these things. Um, I listened to uh, the Back in My Play podcast uh, just today, and they were talking about Mercs, and I was like, oh shit, Mercs was awesome. How much is that? Forty bucks, complete in box. And I just got to, I just got to thinking. I was like, this is no longer a bubble. Like this is how much these games cost now, and this sucks. Yeah, I think we've been speculating for years that like, uh, is this a bubble? Like, I don't think we ever came to a conclusion ourselves, but like, it doesn't seem like a bubble. No, it's you know? it's it. No, I mean, I think, I think eventually, eventually, there's gonna hit. It's gonna hit a stopping point, but it's not gonna burst or anything. I think it's probably gonna slow down at some point after it stops expanding. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I, I agree. Yeah. Someday. It's, someday, it's, but not not now. At some point, it's going to top out. But even like, I was like, oh, Sunset Riders, right? Super super popular Genesis game. Awesome game. 80 bucks. Uh-huh. And I'm like, Fuck. Oh, yeah. Sunset like, Riders is expensive, no matter what system it, it, you buy. No, certainly. But I, I'm just like, and I knew that one would be more expensive, but it's just like, and that one's kind of been floating around 80 bucks for a while now. But mm-hmm. um, it's just like... I, it's it's really this, so th- these prices because I love and we've talked about this before. I love to play on my CRT and have that kind of CRT nostalgic experience. These prices uh-huh. are getting to the point though where that's not going to be realistic for most people unless you want to buy a game, sell a game, buy a game, sell a game. And if that's the case, you'd just be buying the carts, um, you know. And so we are getting to the point where uh, hopefully. And I, there isn't anything there yet that I really, truly think does enough for me to jump on the emulation or FPGA bandwagon yet. Frame Meister doesn't do it for me. Um, you know, the the NES, there's like a $500 NES out there. There's a retro USB from your retro USB. They have an HDMI upscaling one. There's nothing that mm. just does all the games good w- without emulation. Mm. Uh, and until that happens... I don't know if I'd ever jump ship, but I also don't think I'm going to go deep into these huge collections anymore because it's just like I can't justify the price any longer. Well, I, I've got to I've got to say, I mean, whether it's blasphemy or not, like I I really really like my EverDrives for the systems I have them for. EverDrives are a solid choice. That is a solid choice. I I, I mean, I, I know some people are shitting out there hearing me say that, but no, no, really, it's it. For the systems like Super Nintendo, look, I'm never going to have a Super Nintendo collection. I, I have a Super Nintendo collection, but like, um, I'm never going to pursue that, you know, unless a big lot comes up with like, can't, mi- like a can't miss lot, you know, that I can actually get. <laughs> but, you know, I'm really happy with my Super Nintendo EverDrive. Um, I've got the N64 EverDrive, which I, I don't want to collect N64 games. I like the system a lot, but like, you know, I, it's not on my radar as far as systems I, I would collect. So I don't know. I, I, I like what I, I and whatever other ever drives I have. I, I really, really like it. So yeah, I'm, I'm just pulling up more prices here. I jumped into my eBay on some things I have on watch. Streets, yep. of, Streets of Rage, 40 bucks. Streets of Rage 2, 40 bucks. Like, I'm just like, ah, my God. I just, I want those games, but I just, I can't throw. Bas- ba- basically, if you've held on to them since your childhood or you bought them like retail, you can like sell them for what you paid practically. <laughs> yeah, a little more even. But yeah, I mean, it's like stuff, some of the stuff like Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter and some of that stuff's a little, a little cheaper now. But um, man, I was just, I just, had a dream about a that it's last just, It's not a bubble anymore. And it's just, I'm like, God, I want to go get all of these things, but I just, I can't, I can't. But by the way, you just reminded me I had a dream about the uh, Genesis version of uh, Mortal Kombat. I don't even remember what the context was. Just when you said that, like it just pop, you know how it is. I'm sure everybody does how it pops in your head. And it's like, ooh, you know, light bulb went off. I, I, I remember somebody somebody had it, just bought a Genesis in that. And I was like, oh, my God, do you know about the blood code? Because there was no blood until you put in the blood code. Mm-hmm. So, that was the only reason to buy the Genesis version over. But uh, I, I, in my and, the, dreams, and I, when the six button controller came out on Sega, it was far superior for fighting games than the well, SNES, shoulder SNES, buttons. SNES controller. Yeah, I know, but fuck that. Six buttons, oh, shit, six, fa- six face buttons is what you want. It was so much better. But honestly, like the Genesis version, 
graphics wise and sound wise was not preferable to the six, to the uh, Super Nintendo except for the pixels of blood that flew out of uh the guys every time you hit them after the blood code mm-hmm. so i mean it 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 and and the whole sweat thing and no you know g rated fatalities on the super nintendo kind of practically made that un, unplayable i back in the day though like i was really excited cuz i remember uh me and my friend dave had rented uh uh, Ren and Stimpy, Vidiots, and uh, Mortal Kombat for the Super Nintendo. And, uh, I mean, I was extremely excited. And I'm off a side tangent here, obviously. But I was extremely excited about it um, because it looked a lot like the arcade version. Like, it was very, very close graphically. But, like, this whole sweat and G-rated fatalities thing kind of didn't work, you know. I'm with you. So, yeah, it didn't work for me, but I didn't have a SNES. So anyway, I'm I'm sorry I took you way off your. Uh, so you're talking about Genesis games? No, I mean that's just kind of it, and I just think we're just at a point now where you you really do have to start to think about the the conversation is starting to shift because when we first started this podcast, it was you know very traditional. Hey, if you want these retro experiences, uh get the get the system get a crt get the consoles and i'm starting to move off of that a little bit just based on the fact that the fucking games are just getting so expensive and the hardware is getting so expensive yeah. um like the hardware not so much but like i can't blame somebody if you want to make this thing look good on your lcd right i can't get mad at somebody if you want to uh get a get an everdrive um you know stuff like that like it's just it's getting so expensive now retro pie whatever that god it's it's just it's depressing retro pie is a cool option too i think yeah I don't know. yeah i wish i could just re again like everything like could i just rewind three years ago i'd take out a small business loan and buy all of this shit no doubt huh. i was I'm actually sorry, i was I actually stop this. i was actually looking at so i didn't know how big of a collecting scene neo geo had Mm-hmm. You can't get Neo Geo games for under like seven hundred bucks now. Wait, are you talking for like the console? Neo yeah, yeah, Geo? yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even like. I guess I never, I never even knew anybody that had that. The, yeah, that's the thing. And now there's like some big fish that are going after these collections. I mean, thousands of dollars per game. Mm. Crazy to me. I mean, they were yeah. always expensive, but now it's just like, oh boy. Well, I, yeah, I mean, I have a Neo Geo, like an arcade Neo Geo, and, like an MVS system and stuff. Right. And um, I, I just, you know, that's another thing. I kind of cheated on that. Be, well, I cheated on that, but I have good reasoning for it as well. Like, I don't have any nostalgia for the Neo Geo. For most, some of it. You know, I do for some of it, but I just got the 160 in one cart. And, um, you know, there, there's, there, I, there's only so many fighting games that I can give a crap about. Um, and Neo Geo was just, everything was a fighting game, like art of fighting, like the, um, oh my God, I'm going to blank on this, but even they had like a double dragon uh, fighter, King, which King, is stupid. The King of fighters. Uh, they had, uh, King of monsters was cool, oh, King of monsters. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, no King, no King, King of, of fighters. fighters was also they had like King of fight, 300 versions of King, King of fighters. They had Samurai Showdown, which is awesome. And, like, that's one of the few that I had nostalgia for. But, um, yeah, Neo Geo, like, meh. And then there's people, scre- there's, you know, uh, Metal Slug in 1, 2, and 3. I don't know how many of oh, those. Oh, Metal Slug was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, stuff like that. And it's just like, you know, it's arcade it's, stuff. And, yeah, let's say Metal Slug 2, like, up to a point. And then you're just like, okay, this is just eating my quarters. If I were actually paying <laughs> for it, that is like a total quarter eater, like impulse, like I have to continue, you know. So anyway, but um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I don't Neo know. We'll, we'll see. But anyway, so that's so I've done two. Th- so anyway, I guess back to to rewind a little bit. I've done. So I've been looking at expanding my Genesis collection because I was a Sega. We I was a Sega kid. I'm a Sega kid, and I've also been scooping up some of the Sega in the '90s stuff for Sega Master System. So I grabbed Altered oh, Beast. Yeah. I grabbed mm-hmm. Altered Beast, and then I grabbed uh, shit. I can't remember the other ones, but generally those are pretty easy finds and are usually priced the same as the rest of the games as long as you're patient. Right. Um. So, 
uh grabbed oh wanted i grabbed wanted as well because it was like 20 bucks oh, okay so figure like first thing how many second for the 90s games are there i, I never even uh, uh, counted. It's, it's like 20 something like that oh that's something give bad. or give or take so yeah i mean if you figure and most of them are pretty in, or inexpensive or like lower end inexpensive buys but you're probably again in this day and age you're still probably looking at 20 20 to 30 shipped on on each of those so, i mean it could be anywhere from a 400 dollars to 600 dollars expense but um you know i'm not in a hurry i don't really count those as part of the collection as much since it is just a sticker that's added so it's like ah, if i see them and it's reasonable i'll pick some up but uh, other than that i'm not really going down that route yeah i think some people are are kind of on the fence about really acknowledging that as a variant um, you've got all, you've got all the actual variants. So, right. I mean, I mean the, the one, the widely accepted ones. So, um, That's and right. I do except for that goddamn outrun and the Enduro. So, well, no, well, just the manual for the Enduro. Oh, the yeah. manual for the Enduro. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. So anyway, but, uh, yeah, man, that's 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 a feat. I need to get there at some point here. I'm still looking. So. I'm still looking every day. So if uh, if I see one, obviously, if I see the enduro with the manual for like under sixty bucks, or the outrun, I will just buy them and then ship the. Because like I would hate to text you and you're out at a lesson or some shit like that. So I'm like anything I see, I'm just buying and then I'll work. We'll work it out after the fact. Right. Um. That sounds like a deal. So, yeah. Uh, so I had a, uh, I had a, so to, to move on to a different topic, yes. I, had, I had a fucking kerfuffle this weekend. Oh yeah. So I got sick of my PSN name. I've been sick of it for a while because we've talked about Motley Crue for the longest time and how big of a douchebag Nikki six is. <laughs> yeah. And so my PSN name was N one KKI six. I thought I was clever, yeah. but it's always a bitch giving it to people. And so I decided because my my Xbox name it's been that it's been that for like your entire life. It has. So so my my Xbox uh, handle is Retro Jonesin, and why not Retro Jones? Well, here's the deal: Retro Jones wasn't available on Xbox, but nobody has it. Just something about Retro Jones. I don't know if they don't like the Jones or what. You can't get Retro Jones. I don't know, but Retro Jonesin is available. So I grabbed that on Xbox, and then I. Technically, once um, once uh, the the Switch gets there, Nintendo gets there, my user ID uh, is also Retro Jonesin. And then on the PlayStation, I was like, I want to change my PSN to Retro Jonesin. Well, on PSN, you can't change your fucking ID. And every time they do an event, you think, here it comes, they're going to let you change your ID. Uh. And I was thinking, I'm going to wait till E3 this year. And try to change my ID to Retro Jonesin. But Mm -hmm. I started to get nervous that it's going to get, they're going to let me change it and I'm going to get there and then someone's going to take fucking Retro Jonesin. Right. So I went and registered Retro Jonesin on a new account for PSN. But what Mm -hmm. that means is I lose all my trophies, I lose all my past purchases. I can still access them if I log into my old account, but I'm basically starting 100% fresh. And so I also wanted to associate my real e- my good email with the new account. So I had to change my email on the old account, then change my email to the new from the new account to my old email, then change the old one. It's just been a pain in the ass. I had to renew my PlayStation Plus subscription so I could take advantage of the cloud <laughs> saving stuff. I then uh, had to set the new PS4 to my primary PS4, and then. So then, since PlayStation has like a roundabout way to do game sharing, I went to my other PlayStation 4 and had to sign in with my old account and set that as my primary PS4 for that account so I can technically share games back and forth. Uh And then like, I was like, this is so not worth it, but I thought I was all done. And then I was like, fuck, I've got so many PlayStation downloads associated with my Vita, so my Vita is always going to be my old account. But right. I just got so sick of that PSN name that I was like, "Damn, dude!" That, I'm I'm like that doesn't even to me that doesn't even have anything to do with Motley Crue anymore, you know? Uh, it it does, it doesn't. But I just hated N1KKI6, and then once Retro Jonesin was available and it was something I could get on all three, yeah, I was like, "Why well, gots to have it?" Because I couldn't get N1KKI6 on Xbox One because someone had N1KKI6 on the Xbox. 
It had to have been used. It, it wasn't though, because I checked, and this guy was playing like Xbox 360 games, and I didn't have an Xbox 360, and I didn't play any of the games this dude played. It wasn't me, dude. That's just that, maybe it's like my long lost brother. I should reach out to this guy. Maybe this guy's trolling you. Maybe he's playing like Barbie's Dream House and crap like that, and making you look like a fool. <laughs> well, maybe, uh, but the reason so the the reason that I decided now was going to be kind of my big break. Uh-huh. was on PlayStation specifically, I didn't do a lot of digital downloads. Um, and so I wasn't super worried about losing my PlayStation Plus stuff. Um, and as far as game saves go, I just finished Resident Evil. So there was yep. nothing that I'd started on PlayStation 4. And I was like, okay, I've got a lineup of games, and I don't know when I'm going to play these, but I've got Horizon Zero Dawn to play. I've got Yakuza Zero to play. MLB The Show comes out on Tuesday, and I've got Persona 5 coming early in April. And I'm going, if I'm going to make this change, I'm going to make it now. Because I'm literally, my PlayStation Plus renewal on the old account was coming up at the end of May. And so I was like, I'm at this crossroads where I have no real equity in anything current on PlayStation. Yep. Other than past purchases, which I, I don't really care about. My trophies, I got to be honest, I don't really give a shit about trophies either. Uh, I care mm. about them when I'm playing the game because it's fun to chase them, but I don't really care about, like, I've got 7,000 trophies. Like, that doesn't really do anything for me. So I was like, all right, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it now. So I messed around with all of that shit this weekend. Mm-hmm. And it's still kind of a pain in the ass, but, what you know, three, four months from now, I, there's I'll probably never log into my old account, so... Well, that's a big step, dude. It's a big step in my life, my friend. It is. It, it totally is. Anybody that knows Mike knows that that's a... Uh, because, like I said, ever since there were sign-on names and crap like that, that's what it's been, so... Yeah. Well, good, Yeah. I guess. I've got, uh, I've got one more. <clears throat> yeah. i got two more. I've got one little retro uh, restore story, and then I've got a hilarious story from school. Do it. Um, I tweeted out that I know it's frowned upon to do 60 and ones in old cabs. And uh-huh. uh, someone tweeted at me a pip up pinball, some a pinball. And I and, um, totally understand where he's coming from. But I was, I want to clarify something as far as like, there's so many cabinets you could 60 in one. I just want to clarify with this DK three cab that I have. I'm yeah. not ruining the cabinet. Like the cabinet is going to get restored into a DK three. Or a probably a Donkey Kong proper at some point, but like I'm not going to multi like no retro cabinets are being ruined in this. Like literally, I'm just putting a PC in it and wiring it to a, a monitor. That's it. Mm. So like yes, I could go restore a Donkey Kong three, but Donkey Kong three sucks, and I'm not going to track down boards and make a Donkey Kong three. <sighs> you know, uh, although yeah. I, it, although it is a plywood. And so it is a really, really, really nice Nintendo cabinet. So I should probably do something with it, but I may convert it back to a Donkey Kong and go from there. So, what color? Oh, as, what color would you do? The, what color would you do if I did that? Would well, you, what color is it right now? Like gray or something? Uh, right now it's weird. It's it's a blue with the DK three on it. Oh, okay, well, it was just converted from a Donkey Kong then. Okay, I so think just DK. I think DK three was a conversion. I'd say. Um, if it's it was red, a conversion, but if it was red, then it would have been one of more of the uh, rare ones. Rare ones. Yeah. Well, yeah, because there was a I forget the name of the game because the red Donkey Kongs were when uh, Nintendo first uh, exported it to the United States or whatever. But it used to be like a periscope or something, some crap like that. It was like a submarine game or something like that. But they just converted those. They just sent over kits or whatever, and they converted the early Donkey Kongs from those. So that's why the red. I th- I think I may have that totally wrong, but I don't really. Uh, I don't really own a Donkey Kong, or I, I've owned a couple over the years here. But as far as the history, I don't, I don't claim to be an expert on that. But there was something like that. So the red Donkey Kongs are really worth a lot. You know, your Donk- DK three was. I'm a hundred percent sure. If you look on the plate on the back. Uh, it should tell you. Yeah, and I sell all the caging and stuff in there too. I did actually sell. So, just to be, I did actually sell the boards to somebody uh, that had a red DK three. 
Yeah, I would just years, like years ago. Something. Like I just I didn't know what to do with the boards, and I want to keep the cab. And he wanted the cab too, and I was like, ah, I kind of want to keep the cab because I might convert it down. And so he took the boards off my hands, so nothing was harmed. Uh, some things were split up, unfortunately, but it is what it is. Yeah, I think um, it's just I, I would just do something with it, you know. Like I would just be worried about that for now. Uh, I don't know. I mean, just whatever you do, just whatever. I guess you know. Yeah, throwing a <laughs> throwing a computer. In. Um, no, it, I mean I, I I get it. But yeah, I mean I, yes, I, I know. I like totally hey, if you've got one of these things and it's nice, bring it back to some sort of glory. Totally, I'll totally do that someday. But I would also like to like you know. If I can just throw a computer in it and play some games on it and make it look cool in my office, I'm going to do that. And then at some point when I have more time, yes, I'll definitely do something, uh, a, a better restore in some fashion once I figure out what the hell I want to do with it. And most, and, and most likely, it would be, be a, a, an original Donkey Kong. So. And speaking Indeed. of that, do you know how pissed I am? I've thought about this multiple times. I don't have any regrets of getting any rid of any of my arcade machines. Except the wide body Mario. Yeah, wide body Mario that you sold for four hundred dollars. Six hundred. Oh, did you? Yeah. Okay, yeah, because you were gonna sell it for four, and I was like, why? No, I got, <laughs> I got, I got six hundred. I there was one on Craigslist for like a thousand. I was like, yeah, okay, that's fair. But I was like, fuck, I would. That's the one that I actually wish I still had. Yeah, that that, that one was. I mean, it. I don't know. I I I like that one a lot. So. Um, but, uh, and then anyway, so other side story. So I'm in school again and I've been writing t- fucking papers about, oh, I still next week I'm getting to GameStop because GameStop is closing 150 stores and I had to write some papers on GameStop. So I have some shit there. But anyway, I was writing papers all the last six weeks on financial risk management and variety of topics and some bullshit and Mm -hmm. So last week I had to write this paper. I had to write a paper about leadership and I had to write a paper about uh, banking risk. Great topics to be writing papers on. And that sounds super boring. It's super boring. It really has nothing to do with the conversation, but I just want to put some context into what I'm actually doing at school still. So I submitted one of my papers and I remember telling Carrie, I submitted a paper that I wrote like, tired as hell and after a couple drinks and then i signed in a couple days later to get my grade and i got a or on this one particular i got a 96 on it and i went i don't think noise i go i don't even think my my professor's even reading my papers i think she's actually just giving me a good score because of my past work and my current gpa which is a 4-0 thank you very much but uh so anyway, at the end of the semester, we have to compile all of our pro- uh, projects into one paper and essentially make it like a, a longer, like 20 page, you know, assignment. Yep. I download the paper that I got a 96 out of 100 on. Mm-hmm. I submitted the wrong paper to this course. Mm-hmm. She didn't read it. I submitted the written assignment from my leadership course to my risk management course. She (laughs) put comments on it. I even had the rubric for the leadership course at the bottom of the paper. She put a comment. This rubric isn't associated with this assignment. Please see the rubric above for your grading. Okay. But, But the rest of the paper was about leadership, not risk management. And she even had comments like, good, great point, blah, 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 blah. And she docked me points for not including a references page. Really? But so what did you end up getting? Well, I got a 96 out of 100. Cause she oh, didn't read, so this is the so, one you're... Okay. So I submitted the wrong... Pa- so I submitted my leadership paper to the risk management course. Uh-huh. She didn't read any of it. She just copy pasted comments and realized there wasn't a reference page on it and docked me points for the reference page and went as wow. f- and went as far as to realize that uh, the, rubric was- the rubric was wrong and then what's <laughs> fucked up I hope they don't realize it at some point here because I open up like last week's paper to modify it for this week's paper and I accidentally overwrote that file uh-huh. for the one that I actually meant to submit. 
<laughs> and so yeah. now if they come back and ask me for it, I'm going to have to rewrite the fucking paper, which wouldn't take a ton of, which wouldn't take a long time. But it was just funny because it was a coincidence that after I was like, Carrie, I don't think that this woman's reading my papers. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out she wasn't. So uh, that's hilarious. That's great. Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. Maybe after that whole um, that whole uh, plagiarizing thing, they're just instructed to give me good grades. Was that the same instructor? No, no, no it was a different one. They're like, screw it, just forget about it, just give me good <laughs> grades. But uh, yeah, so now I'm off for a week, uh, so I'm going to tr- try to plug in a ton of gaming this week. So, noise. Yeah. Well, I hope to get my life back at some point here and, and get back to gaming myself. So I'm with you. I'd recommend it. I think we should make it a point to at least get one Master System game in a week. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the problem is that I'm going to get stuck in one for like, I'm gonna like, I can't just play it in a week. Or I'll, I'll be like, I spent 30 hours this week. It depends on, on the game, though. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, it's not like most of the Master System games don't take more than... No, well, I mean, I, I in all honesty... I, bleh, I'm sorry, in all honesty, um, dare I say it, most of the Master System games are garbage. Yeah. Yeah, I think we should not talk about the shitty ones. Yeah, totally. I mean, unless they're hilariously shitty, like Elf. <laughs> well, yeah, Elf. Somehow, Elf... Like, through that whole experience and stuff like that, I really, really, really like Elf now. We should probably talk. We should rehash the Elf conversation at some point. But That was hilarious. Because Mike, spent, Mike, you uh, you were on Twitch. Yeah. You Twitch streamed it a while ago, uh, several years ago. And uh, you got to the very last. If you would have held on for, like, a millisecond more, you would have won the game and you died. <sighs> You were so close, so close. I sat like, down. I shit. sat down and was like, "I'm beating Elf tonight, and I'm not stopping." And you, you were so close, it, dude. The funny part is, you know, you know how I am, and you're like, "You don't have the fucking patience. You're going to smash something." And I was like, yeah. "No, I won't. I've got this." And like, all things considered, I fucking went after it like a champ. I played it for like four hours, and I finally got there, and I got to the top. And I died. And I think you go up and yeah, there, you, you go up to the moon or something like that. And literally, if you know, because it was scrolling up, the screen was scrolling up. If it would have scrolled up one more frame or whatever, you would have won the game. And you got hit by a comet or something and died like right at the end. And then you kept trying and kept getting worse and worse and worse because you kept trying harder. Yeah, and then at that, at that point, it's you're pretty much done. And you're then done. I didn't have any. Um, I didn't. Have, didn't want to I just had. I, I had no ambition anymore to go after it. But that was that was an experience. So I don't know. Elf turned out to be an actual one that we both actually really kind of like. I, at the end, yeah. At the end of the day, like once you get, like once you're good enough to get all the like bullshit mechanics out of the way, right? It's a terrible game. Don't get me wrong. But like once you're like, oh, I've got to swing eight seconds early. It actually got kind of fun a little bit in a weird way of like trying to oh yeah because the hit detection was just garbage yeah. on it you you were like half the screen away from like those bats with the baguette or whatever and like you would have to swing like halfway when they're halfway across the screen or something yeah so that was bad but it, it's it's like et bad except for like not even close to as clever as et <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like you can beat you can it. once you once you figure it out, like you can actually beat the game in six like six minutes. It's it's so shitty. I mean, somebody should be ashamed of themselves. Yeah, but um, you know, whatever. That's it's, what it is. it's 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 a classic uh, classic shitty game. So, sure. but anyway, I wish all the Master System games. I wish I had the patience for all Master System games like that. But there's no way. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, right, right we will on. get back. to we should get back to that. So anyway, um, yeah, I don't really know if I have anything to add to that. You got anything to add, Mike? No, I got nothing. All right, well, let's go ahead and wrap up our show for this week. Um, so yeah, so for RetroGameFix.com, the Retro Jones Podcast, this is Mitch. This is Mike. And we'll see you next week. See ya. Sunrise morning light The 
guys, the shadows fly. Moon creeps out of sight. Street lights dim and I. The way this city dies. 